Hi students, welcome to HSC Earth and Environmental Science and Module 8 Resource Management. This is video number 11. We're going to be having a bit of a look at uh, energy production and recycling of wastes. The learning intention for this video is for you to be able to evaluate the sustainability of a named waste management option. For example, energy used to produce and or recycle the waste. So this little video is basically focusing on sustainable waste management. And that's going to look both at some of the processes or some of the advantages associated with recycling. We're also going to be looking at some of the ways in which energy can be produced from the processing of wastes. And we'll also introduce this section by just focusing initially on the waste hierarchy. So here is our waste hierarchy. And you can see that this is a nice little structure. It's good for actually uh, keeping track of this. It's something that you can reproduce during an examination to be able to not only give you a nice visual, but also to be able to talk about some of these strategies that we're going to be talking about in this and future videos. The waste hierarchy is basically just a set of priorities for the efficient use of resources. It seeks to avoid waste, or at least to minimise waste as much as possible, through actions that reduce household waste, industri industrial waste, and also waste produced by government processes. The idea is that we work through this little hierarchy, this inverted pyramid, by trying to find as many strategies as possible that are going to avoid completely or significantly reduce the amount of waste that we're currently producing. This may be through reusing certain types of waste that now are actually just going into landfill. It may be about trying to recycle particular materials. That may be materials that we're already recycling, that we want to do better. We want to increase the, the amount of uh, recycling that we're doing. Or it may be looking for ways to recycle other materials that currently aren't part of that recycling process. We'll also, as I mentioned, be talking about about energy recovery or energy production and how we might be able to look at ways in which some of these other strategies might help to reduce the energy needs that are going into the manufacture of a lot of different materials. We can also talk about waste treatment and the disposal of wastes and obviously dumping our waste in landfill is our least preferable uh, action for waste. So it's at the very bottom of this pyramid and hopefully it represents the smallest uh, amount of waste. Unfortunately, at the moment, that's not always the case. So we're looking at strategies around reusing materials, around the recycling of materials, the reprocessing of particular materials as well, where we can recover certain uh, components, and also to look at energy recovery and energy production. And that's what we'll look at next. So some of the recent figures that I was able to find are 2018-2019 figures, 2.1 megatons of waste used for energy recovery. So this is not too bad, I guess, and you put it into scale. Uh, we had that video, uh, we had that graph on the previous video where we were looking at energy uh, production, energy recovery, and it's not quite um, as good as we would like. It sounds like a lot, but um, it's it's one of those things we're wanting to, to look at. And 82% of that recovery was through methane gas collections from anaerobic decomposition. So this was used to uh, generate electricity in the same sort of way that we use coal to heat water into steam to drive turbines to generate electricity. You can just do that with methane gas as your source uh, anyway. And if you're doing that from a gas that's being produced from um, waste disposal, then at least you're trying to do some level of recovery for some of that material that you're just throwing uh, into a pile. 15% of the two point megatons of waste used in energy recovery came from solid fuels um, that were made from wastes, mostly things that you would expect, timber, plastics, uh, paper and textiles, sometimes um, tires, organic solvents and paints were also used. Um, not as often, these are more hazardous and so the burning of these materials, even the processing of these materials uh, can create more problems than they potentially solve. However, um, these have been used to replace fossil fuels in cement kilns, kilns and also in some industrial furnaces. So this is a small but not insignificant component of our energy production, energy recovery from the disposal of wastes. The methane 
is not just produced by anaerobic uh, decomposers. It can also be produced from the aerobic digestion of waste products, particularly organic material. And there are four plants that currently use commercially derived food waste. So this, again, it's only a small percentage, but it's another source of energy that we're getting from the disposal of wastes. So it's not high on our waste hierarchy, but it's not insignificant. Waste to energy technology involves burning rubbish at high temperatures to create steam, to power turbines and generate electricity. And this is the classic um, coal process. So it's the same sort of thing that we see at coal-fired uh, power stations. We, we just burn the coal in order to heat the, the water into steam to run the turbines. So all we're trying to do is to replace the coal that we're using currently with some of the fuels that may be derived from the processing of these uh, particular waste or forms of waste. We did talk about in the last video incineration as a possibility as well and that could divert millions of tonnes of waste from landfill, displacing potent methane gas emissions but the problem that we have with uh, incineration is still the potential problem of air pollution. So one of the things that we don't want to do is to create one problem by trying to solve another problem. So uh, this is where balance is very important in scientific processes. We need all the information that we can get. We need to understand exactly what's going on in each of these processes so we can maximize the good that we do and try and minimize uh, any uh, potential harm that may result from the choice of different processes. Energy recovery and or production is one form of trying to uh, address some areas in the waste hierarchy. Another is recycling. And one of the things that we, we do know is that the energy required or the energy that's expended to recycle a product is significantly less than the energy expended to produce new products. So this is a real double tick for us because it's a, a way of getting a double bang for the buck here. What we're doing is we're, we're recycling, which is reducing the amount of waste, but we're also reducing the amount of energy that we need in order to produce uh, the products that we need. So rather than producing something new, we produce something from a recycled product and we're getting a double hit for the, the value of that particular process. The National Waste Policy in about 2018 set some, um, some aggressive goals, I guess some um, big, hairy, audacious goals to try and address some of the problems that we're having around uh, waste management and the fact too that our population continues to grow so we would expect that our uh, production of wastes would continue as well which is why waste management is such a critically uh, important process and why sustainability has to be part of that conversation. One of the goals of this national waste policy was by 2030 to halve the amount of organic waste that was being sent to landfill. So we've already said that this is a possibility for some energy production and at least some energy recovery that we can gain from this particular process. But there were a lot of other goals as well. They were about trying to reduce personal waste on a national average by 10% to increase recovery rate to 80% for all waste streams um, by the same uh, year. So this, as I said, is a very uh, aggressive goal. It's one that it has to be looked at in light of the fact that the population is expected to continue to grow. And so therefore, we can expect that this challenge is only going to continue to become greater. And therefore, we're going to need to make sure that we have some very clear processes in place in order to try and meet these goals. One of the challenges for politicians in our country is that the very um, small amount of time that each of them is um, in government before they then need to go to the people for another election often precludes a lot of large-scale processes being done. There's just not the confidence that if you start something, you're going to be there at the end in order to see it through. And so a lot of decisions are made on those very short-term basis, short-term gains, sometimes um, for political expediency rather than for the common good. When we talk about recycling, we're talking about breaking down waste materials, reducing the need for raw materials to be extracted from the earth. So that's another positive, another tick in the box, and also reducing the energy required to produce the desired material which is what we talked about before. So effectively three ticks for this one and that's why recycling is so important. But I think one of the things that's critical with uh, recycling and we notice that in our waste audit is that you have to be able to try and provide it 
uh, as easy a path as possible for people to recycle. If there were two bins sitting side by side, it's more likely that people would take the time to separate their rubbish and put the right thing into the right bin. If there's only one bin here and there's a recycling bin 100 metres down the road, it's more likely that the majority of people will just chuck all the rubbish in the uh, landfill waste. Hopefully as technology improves, recycling will become more and more energy efficient. We'll be given um, greater choice to um, take up the challenge of recycling and we'll also have the facilities that we need in order to maximise the amount of and type of recycling that we're doing, separating as much as we can of the waste that we're currently throwing into that solid landfill uh, bins that we are using on a regular basis to try and, and minimise that, to try and reduce that. So these are some of the uh, goals that are ahead of us. These are some of the strategies that we can use. The waste hierarchy is a really important uh, visual for you to try and just keep in your head so that you can talk about some of these important strategies in terms of sustainable waste management. Thanks for watching.